What's up, what's up, everyone? This is Welcome to the Raw Zone, hashtag Inside the Raw Zone. We are here, Michael Bostic, a.k.a. Buster Hyman. Um, yes, we'll explain that part later. Um, but we're here. Um, I am Ivy.xo. We're here with our guest. Uh, she is the queen of the Jabber Tears podcast, Janelle from HR, everyone. Clap, 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 clap. Oh, thank you guys for having me on. I appreciate the invite. I look forward to talking about some good old wrestling. Yeah. But first, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us about the Job of Tears podcast, what you guys do, what you don't do, you like to dislike. All just all around. Um, well, the Job of Tears podcast, which you guys can follow on YouTube, um, Spotify, iTunes, any um, outlet where you can listen to podcasts, is, is SoundCloud is available. Um, myself, along with my co host, um, Sir Wilkins, and Mr. Black of the Job of Tears podcast. We've been doing our podcast, oh God, almost two and a half years now. It's a weekly debate on wrestling's ins and outs. We talk about all different types of brands, so WWE, AEW, you know, we're heavy on the independent scene here in the tri-state area um, and, and in the South. We have a lot of friends that wrestle down there, so we try to support them. Uh, we also kind of created our own network, so we have um, a few other podcasts under our brand, so we have... Cats and Dogs podcast, which is hosted by Lawrence and Tatiana, where you get the male and female perspective of different topics. And then we have your sports um, podcast with Dre, Matthew, Larry, and Tavia. Um, so we've been kind of building our brand here and there. Um, and also do viewing parties when the world opens back up here in New York. Um, so that's about it. Um, do's and don'ts, ins and outs. Um, I don't know, like you in terms of wrestling or just life, like. I mean, it could be, yeah. So you do like I guess, you know what you guys. Hmm, how do I put this? I mean, you guys don't like no wrestling bashing, like stuff like that. Like what is? No, I mean it's not about bashing. I think that's the kind of misconception. Just in anything in wrestling is it's an opinion. It's subjective. So everyone's gonna have an opinion. Everyone's gonna have a say in things and I think it's important to I think the biggest thing that we don't necessarily like is when people don't respect each other's opinions because that's just like we'll like when we we kind of got some some smoke when we spoke about Tessa oh in the group chat well not only in the group chat but just in general like people are like oh they siding with her and all this and it's just like no, we're not siding with her. Like, it's clear that we don't agree that if she said what she said, she should have said it. But right. you also, too, have to think about that was how many years ago, you know, has the person changed, what's different. And also, too, like, some of these wrestlers that we talk about or that we've crossed paths with, we personally have been around and we personally know. So it's just a mixture of, of you know, respecting people's opinions. Um, and then also, too, we are super big on everybody eating at the table, we want to see everybody win, um, especially, you know, our boys that work on the independent circuit. There's a lot of them here in the Northeast and then also in the South. So we try to just, you know, my goal is always to, my goal is low-key for Jabba Tears to be the rock nation of the wrestling world, <laughs> but that's just a far catch one. Um, Cause we want to be able to help and put on, you know, people that you would never heard of. So right. I think it's super important that, you know, of course, you know, we have WWE, this, you know, big, you know, AEW all different types of promotions. Um, but it's also important to highlight those that are working on the independent scene because they don't have that big machine behind them. Right. So we try to give them the platform, whether it's to come on the podcast or host a viewing party or whatever it is, to give them that platform to reach out to people that have never heard of, of them. But you guys are doing the digital viewing parties too. How did that end up working out? Um, they were, that was a lot. Like I, w I get overstimulated when it's a lot of shit. So <laughs> I was just in the background. But yeah, we f uh, we figured, you know, with quarantine, we kind of like wanted to do different things. So one of the different things was doing, um, I think both nights we did WrestleMania on Zoom with those wrestling girls and Deadass Podcast, Deadass Girls Podcast. Um, and we've also done lives on Instagram a lot more during quarantine, well, the boys have. Um, so you have like Mr. Black show that he does. And then um, Shout out to he just celebrated his birthday too. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday. That's what I was gonna say. Um, and then Sir Wilkins was doing like his five on five with certain um with certain people. So they would 
talk about their top five rappers or their top five wrestlers or their top five tag teams, like different things of the week. Um, so we just try to, I think one of the things we wanted to do during quarantine was to just to keep content. Um, and it was just to be consistent. I think once you kind of lose that consistency, because we haven't recorded in the studio in three months, but we've had to Skype all of our episodes since quarantine. Um, and just being able to just still put out content and people actually still being receptive of it too. So, Do you think with the phase two, phase three, phase four, everything that's going on, but outside everything is still messed up, like, oh, other states are fucking up. Um, what do you think is going to happen now if, like, Cuomo sees that the lockdown, like, the, the opening up is not really helping? Do you think we're going to end up going back into quarantine? Um, back, I don't necessarily think going back into quarantine. I think they've realized, you know, kind of like on, on the government side of mm -hmm. things here in the state of New York, um, what works, what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Um, I think if they delay some of the phases, it may help build, you know, people's, whether it's their immunity or, or wh whether it's their health and then certain things are kind of in clusters. So like, if you go to a party, all those people that you party with are probably the ones that either got it or don't got it. So you can... I think there are better ways to isolate isolate those that have the have the virus or might have come into contact with it. So I think with us being in phase two now is comfortable enough where we can kind of see what our new lives kind of look like. I mean, thankfully, we'll be able to go back to the studio this week um, and be physically there. So that's kind of like a step in the right direction. But it's just going to be baby steps until... The world decides to, you know, get to get get themselves together. That's true. That's very yeah. true. So wrestling is taking an interesting hit over the quarantine. <laughs> um, first of all, they've considered WWE an essential business, which, uh, mm -hmm. no offense, I will still disagree on that because I don't. Will, I think it's I think it's gangster. I think it. I mean, it's gangster, but I don't think it's really an essential thing. That's like saying the liquor stores are essential. Oh, liquor stores are essential, though. So then, why are why isn't the dispensary considered essential? Well, dispensaries have. To, but it's not. It's not. It's not legal everywhere. That's right. Why. If it, if it was legal everywhere, then it would be essential. Like but I have a friend that lives in Arizona, and he has a medical card, and he go and there are dispensaries in Arizona, and they've been open the entire time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not legal everywhere, so you can't everywhere you go, you're not gonna be able to get that. You know what I'm saying? Like And plus yeah. everybody know that you know they, they connect, they they good, they figure it out. Right, right, right. <laughs> There's always a way around it. Man, but so WWE became an essential business. Um we first were performing without crowds. That didn't work out too well. If you I, I loved it. I you I know I thought once they changed the camera angles, I think everything was good. Like at first, where it, it, it was showing it where it looked empty and they didn't know what to do. Now, the regular angles, it was like, oh, this is not going to work. Once they changed some angles, it was like, okay, cool. I think you know what I'm saying? now, before, like, so the last month before we really opened up, I feel like it got better. And I'm not just talking about when they brought the audience in. But like you said, the camera look was better, everything else was better. But I think because people were so nervous in the beginning because there is no audience, they couldn't shake it off completely. If that makes sense. Yes and no. I mean, me personally, I actually enjoyed the no crowds. I mean, as a fan, it hurt because I had to cancel everything for Tampa. So that 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 hurt my soul a yeah. little bit. Um and I really, yeah, March or April, I had some I had some real wrestling stuff to do. I was going to go to Tampa for Mania and had some stuff lined up out there to, you know, represent Jabba Tears. And then I was actually going to go to NWA's um, Crockett Cup in Atlanta, April. Then that got canceled. So, I mean, me physically going to shows, I was like, oh, damn. But actually, it made me focus on what was going on, actually. Like, the actual storyline, the actual what the promos were saying, you know, what you know, moves they were doing in the ring. Like yeah. it, just, it, it put a more, actually, it put more of a spotlight on certain things that I feel like that you didn't you get don't to always get. See on. Right. Like, I, I, I use this as an example, right? The whole um, promo that 
stone cold cut for 316 day, right? Uh -huh. Whether that was a work or not, you know, if him being nervous because of the stage, like no people, or it was whatever, I think it's still, it, it had me open my eyes to how people really engage. Mm -hmm. You know, and being that we are in the media too, um, it makes you think about, okay, so if we were in a room with artists and we had this same situation, how are you going to, you know, make it work? Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like they made it work, though. I, I feel they, like... They definitely made it work. It was very, like, educational in a way. Sure. But they also, I mean, just for me as, you know, a wrestling fan, I appreciated the effort. I right. think, you know... You have, you know, NBA was gone. Baseball didn't start. You didn't have soccer. You didn't have, you didn't even have NASCAR. Oh, yeah, because if it would have been the World Cup, it would have been. The, you, we didn't, the Olympics was canceled. The, the, all marathons, were, like everything was being canceled. So yeah. for me, it just showed that it really defines the show must go on kind of mentality. And you really can't, you know, people can, you know, bitch and moan about, oh, they shouldn't have did that. They put their lives at risk. But guess what? So is any other person that's working an, an essential job or, you know, you got people that still work at the airport or, you know, even the little things, you, people yeah. still going to work. So if these people don't work, they don't get paid. Like, and that's the thing I think people don't realize either is people still got livelihoods. Like, even for like, depending on the type of contract you have, you have people that are on a per diem. So you, anytime you wrestle, you get paid. And if you don't right. wrestle, you don't get paid. So you have to really, you know, take a step back and see all different, you know, point of views before judging. I think everybody, I think the majority of the internet community was just like, oh, Vince's don't care about his employees. He, he doesn't, you know, especially when everybody started to get cuts and stuff like that. And it was like, you have to still realize this is a business at the end of the day. Yeah. And when there's no, like, on the business side, if there's no cash flow into the company, you can't pay people. And they don't have, they, they've been literally running a show every week, like three shows every week without any sufficient cash flow. You cannot, on a business side, there's businesses that, that have been in business over 50 years and can't do that. Right. Yeah. So I, I've always I've shunned away from, you know, the negativity because it's just like you have to look at the bigger picture. Yeah, you know, they had to cut some people, but or for low, but they literally have been entertaining people since the beginning of a pandemic. And who can say they've done that? No, that's very true. And that's and that's why I respect Vince. Um, but I want to ask you your opinion. The whole Roman Reigns situation during the coronavirus, how do you feel? honestly about it because people still think you know they kind of just blackballed him in order because he wanted to make sure he, he, he was safe that his family was safe well this is going to come from a non-roman fan so i'm just going to put that on the table okay i think the decision he he made a grown man decision <laughs> like and if wwe didn't respect it they would have let him go they would have laid right. him off like ev you everyone has a, has a choice Roman's choice was to listen. I'm putting my family first and myself. Like I right. am in remission of cancer. <laughs> my immune system is so compromised; it's not even funny. So, you have Roman that made that decision. That's okay. Like I, I don't understand why it, it it's an issue or or even it's being talked about because Roman's not the only person with a compromised immune system that hasn't been on TV. Like right. Kyle O'Reilly has diabetes. Period. And he has not been on TV. You have Sami Zayn has not been on TV. You have a few people that have not been on TV. So just, I hate when people just want to focus on one person. It's like, he's not the only one. <laughs> he I made think that decision, that that's was, cool. I think they just, because people don't like Roman, it was just easy to just pick on him about that one. Sure, I, I thought like he Roman was, and I didn't care. I think he was, but I think he was the most obvious to really just be like. Yeah, because um, he basically went out and said, I'm no longer. Now, what I didn't like was the timing of it because, because my thing is, you knew when, because New York shut down the middle of March. Right. So if we shut down the middle of March, 
And I think at that time, all the other states were starting to kind of shut down a little. If you knew then, why would you wait two days before WrestleMania to say, oh, guess what? Me and Goldberg's not happening. What? Right. Right. <laughs> like, I was like, that's the biggest joke I in the mean, world. Yeah. Like, you knew then. So why? I, I thought the presentation of it was trash because I was right, just like, right, right. now you now you threw in poor old Braun. And now Braun will get the recognition of him winning the title because, right, because it everyone was focused hit. on Roman. Right, right. It wasn't his shot to begin with. Right. So it, that another voice, the whole situation, because I've been waiting for him to get the championship like that. And now it's just like, I don't even care. Can you really respect his win, though? Absolutely. I, no, I respect the win. No, I respect the win, right? But, like, I mean... I, he, I was, he, was given the, he was given the opportunity and he took it. Like he he yeah, pulled, like, he pulled I, an edge. Like I don't care like what it was that whatever situation he was in that got him there. Just glad he got him there. But I understand why people don't respect it. But I mean they're wrong. <laughs> like it's the, same, right? it's the same where people bitch and moan about about Kofi. Right. Because if 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 Ali ain't hurt himself. Kofi would have never been in the position never got in yep. to even catapult to right. win the title. Where he was at. So listen, when there's an opportunity, you take it. Like <laughs> that's life. Who do you want to see the champion next? Uh, I don't know. God, I don't worry about belts anymore. Um, <laughs> oddly enough, I feel like I'm more invested in NXT titles. <laughs> Alright, so um, but no, um, on the raw, fuck, I've, Drew to me's been boring, but I knew that was yeah. gonna happen. Right. Yeah, well, right. I've been watching more SmackDown than anything. So no, I I knew Drew was gonna be like, I'm falling right. asleep. So right. I I've been prepared for that. Um, I, I if they if they really want, they can really do it. Give it to Bobby if it's done right. I, I can see that. I can see that. I, I think should. they should. Man, they haven't been utilizing Bobby, right? Because there's still people that... Oh, yes. The I, last few weeks? Oh, the, yeah. yeah, the last few weeks. But in the beginning, what were they doing with him? He came back. They made him look like he was abusing his sisters for a while. <laughs> and that whole behind-the-scenes story of him. You know, and then he like, put him to this fake sham of a marriage with Lana. See, but the now looking back, I was like, oh, this this whole I appreciate them for holding on to the whole storyline because everyone else was like, oh, this is bullshit. This is trash. But looking back, it all is what started to get him to where he is right now. Right, right, right. Facing Drew McIntyre. I was like, oh, that shit was genius, low key. And I didn't weird. see it then. It really is, though, and that's what's sad about it. It's just like, yo, it's sex sold enough in order for you to get to where you are. And that's like, what happened to when the fighting was where it was supposed to get you to where you are? No, well, I think it's supposed to be both. Like, I think what we fail to realize <laughs> and I, is like a lot of what our beloved Attitude Era was. It wasn't rest It wasn't the actual wrestling. It was the storyline. It was the stories. Yeah, absolutely. You didn't, you didn't look like... I really want somebody to tell me they t like top five Austin matches, like technical matches. Right, 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 right. And you be sitting there all day twiddling your thumb, like, hmm, what can I say? And instead of being like, what was like the top five storylines of 1998? I'm pretty sure you can tell me that faster than the first one. Right. So the storyline, I think, does, especially I think because of the whole pandemic, it definitely is, it was more important, I think, now than ever. To be able to have the storyline because you was using the same old people every week. Right. Okay. You ever think we're gonna get that Bobby and Brock Lesnar match? Yes. In twenty twenty or twenty twenty one? Oh, not anytime soon. You think they're gonna wait on that? Yes. They first of all they need people there. True. So could that be a big match? True, 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 true. Until people can actually physically be there, I mean. But in all honesty, I'm I'm more invested in Brock and Keith Lee than Bobby. So, yeah. <laughs> like the hints from the Royal Rumble has like I was like, oh, Bobby, who? Let's worry about Keith Lee versus Brock Lesnar. That I oh pay, I pay God, big bucks no. for. 
Well, you so bro at the Royal Rumble when it was so Keith. I just dropped my mic. That's how funny it was. <laughs> so I was at I was at the um Jared Tears podcast Royal Rumble event, right? Uh-huh. And I see now this is at the point where Keith Lee comes out, everyone is screaming all hail. He you know and then it gets to the point where Keith Lee and Brock Lesnar start facing each other. Uh-huh. I never saw Janelle look more scared in her life. Cause I was like No, it wasn't even scared. It was just like I didn't even I I would have never thought of this. Yeah. This is great. This honestly speaking, this year's World Rumble, as shitty as 2020's been, this year's World Rumble was probably one of the best the World men. Rumbles of the past few years. The men's Royal Rumble, yeah. Royal Rumble, let me think if, if I remember. Yeah, yeah, that was the one with Brock threw 15 people on and then got fucked up by Drew. Yeah, that was a good right. Royal Rumble. You right, know right, 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 right. Good Royal Rumble. Good Royal Rumble. Very good. Solid. Rumble. Like, very and then good. you had Edge come out. I dropped my whole drink. Like, right. I was just so over life. <laughs> but right. I was so invested. Like, this Royal Rumble, I felt like everybody was invested. And that's why I, it, it, it honestly was unfortunate with Corona. Drew didn't get the pop that I think he would have gotten at Tampa Bay. But, you know, the show must go on. So, what can you right. do? <laughs> right. So, where do you see Keith Lee going then now, 2021? <laughs> Oh, if Trips is smart, he about to be the first dual champ. He about to be Keith Lee two belts if they are smart. Because he's supposed to face Adam Cole next week. Yeah. And winner takes all. So if Trips is smart, better make Keith Lee that first of her. Because you already gave Adam a few accolades. You made him the first North American champion. Um, he's the longest reigning NXT champion. Like you gave him those. Mm. Here you go. Keep, give Keith Lee that. Come on. If he don't, I may be a little upset. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. Uh, that might hurt. Just a little. Are you looking Are you looking forward to anything wrestling this year? Uh, yeah, just to see what's going to happen next. <laughs> like, both on TV and on the independent scene, I think. Right now is a real crucial time for those that are on the independent circle to kind of put themselves out there. And that's one thing I will give AEW because they've been able to use some of the students. I mean, WWE too, but AEW has been able to utilize um, QT Marshall's schools, his students. Um, and I know a few. So they've been able to be on AEW Dark. They've been, been able to be on AEW on TV and the audience and stuff like that. So that's I think to have those type of opportunities, you wouldn't have had that if there was no quarantine going on either. So there's plus and minuses. Um, but looking forward to, um, I mean, I guess the only thing is like when I'm going to be able to actually see a WWE show live. <laughs> right. <laughs> like when can I pay a ticket? Because yeah, they had me SummerSlam out of Boston. So SummerSlam is to be determined. And then after that, where do we go? So I think I was just looking forward to seeing like when I'll be able to go to a show, like physically. I look forward to whenever I could go to a job at the event again. Listen, girl, so coming soon. Coming yeah. soon. I, I have an idea for SummerSlam, but I gotta run it by the boys and see if it's actually doable. Cause now that you think of, like you think about it, it's a month away and you're like, oh shit. Oh fuck. But exactly. So but I think, you know, we'll try to, you know, do something. I think regardless of what, you know, what it is, I think we'll try to do something. So both AEW, WWE, and even the independent scene have had wrestlers that have been caught on the circuit for sexual harassment, have been caught for, alle- for wild-ass allegations, right? Uh-huh. And it kind of brings back to what you said before about Tessa Blanchard. If we're going to how people got mad over her getting fired and not fired like having the belt taken away from her you know well i wouldn't okay so here's my take or i'll let you finish the question but a quick thing about tessa yeah me personally it's, it's more to the story because if you are not doing your duties as champion so like whether if you're not doing the promos if you're not physically there mm-hmm. if you haven't defended it strip the title that's fine i was totally 
they should have stripped the title for when the quarantine shit started or for when Moose walked out with the TNA title that he dug up from someone's garage. That's fine. If you were going to strip him, if you want to strip her, strip her then. But to strip someone and to fire them, there's something more to the story. Like that, that, right. that doesn't connect. So for everyone being in the hole, like, oh my God, how could they? Mm, there's something else that either Impact's not saying or Tessa's not saying. For her to get completely fired the way that that happened, because that, that just don't make no sense to me. But you I know, think they, they did her the same way they did Hulk Hogan when he said the N word like 10 years oh, before. Fuck Terry. Don't nobody care about Terry like that. Right, right. Ain't nobody signing on him like that. Ain't nobody worried about that. Like, listen, I was mad because I had went to, they did a royal, I guess it was like a royal reunion down in Tampa um, last, last July. Last year. Was it better than the New York reunion? Yeah, it kind of was. A little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. I don't know because so I just so happened to be in Florida that weekend. So I went up to Tampa for the Raw. So I was there. And when I tell you, Terry came out, everybody was like, oh my God, hold on. Just, just a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. When John Cena's music hit, the whole building shook. So ain't nobody worried about Terry because everybody was worried about John Cena. Right. So I, I definitely don't, you know, nobody, it's, it's a very different, it's a different era. Like Hogan saying that 10 years ago or however long he said it versus now would have been handled very differently. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, I mean, absolutely. If it would have been handled now, I think a lot of shit would have went down. Yeah. You know, um, but now like. It would have been karma band like you would have been oh yeah band. it would have been it would have been, been even over, worse like, like yeah was. like there yeah. would be like i always knew hulk hogan was going to come back like i was like yo they're just trying to fan out this little fire whatever let it die down and once it died down everybody ain't really talking about it you know it'll always stay with him but it, it, it'll go away but if it would have happened now it'd have been like yo you can't come back like it's Ever. over like you're done like forget about it hulk hogan the immortal hulk hogan is dead like we're taking all of that back Pretty much. So he's just very fortunate. Very, very fortunate. Right. But going back to you were asking about like the sex allegations and stuff like that. I'm a person. It's, 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 it's a complicated matter because you want to be sympathetic to those that actually went through something. But then you have individuals that really try to capitalize on the timing, the intent and who it is. And I don't agree with if, if something really never happened and you making up some shit. You can just you can literally destroy someone's life in in, in an right. instant. Like cancel season is is a real life thing. So I'm very weary until like when you hear all the facts or when you know you know on both sides. Like I'm a person where I want to know both sides before I cancel anybody. Right. Because I'm not I'm not doing that. But I think you know, especially with corn, everything happens for a reason. And this whole you know us living in a pandemic, uh, you know, is given even wrestling a way to kind of cleanse its, itself on its own. Um, the industry's kind of been like that for, for probably forever. So allegations and stuff are not new. It's just that now people are speaking up, which is really good because in order for change to happen, you got to kind of speak of the past. So you can't, you know, live in this whole like bubble, like of silence. So it's just, it's unfortunate. It, it's people like, like Joey Ryan, like a uh, Michael Elgin, like Jack Gallagher and Jack Gallagher had that new ass tag. He was looking good. I was really upset about that, but when they also, I mean, the, what really hit me, right. And I know like, because a lot of them are still not proven yet. Right. Except for Jack, right. Gallagher, right? He got released. Um, what bothered, what hit me the most was the semi Guevara comments towards Sasha Banks. Now, it, that, that, that wasn't, I don't know why that didn't hit me. It, that didn't hit me at all like that because I'm a person where it's your tone. His tone was on some like. Some he, playful. He just, right. He actually yeah. just used the wrong word because if you right. would have replaced that with, I just want to fuck Sasha Banks, it would have been, been, no, been nothing. It would have been nothing. It would have been nothing. And, 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 that and, cool. and Not I said the same thing. Shit out I, of I said the same thing. I was like, you know, when we play like games or whatever. Like and and I've been more more wary of it, like for the past like maybe few years. Like sometimes you blurt out and say shit like that, 
like, yo, I'm gonna rape this dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, but you gotta be wary of that. And and like, I think not really meaning it in that way. I think people just took it that way because, like you said, like cancel culture is real. Mm -hmm. So like, people are just like, oh, that was you know that that's messed up. How can you want to rape somebody? He wasn't really saying that he was going to rape her. Like he wanted to rape her. He was just saying, yo, she looked good. I wanted to fuck the shit out of her. But of course, like where we're at now in our culture is just like. You know that that type of stuff is just so bad to say. Yeah, like in and, when, and when we spoke about it on our podcast, I didn't even know because I didn't know how it started, so it was really weird. Someone um, like found it in the archive, but yeah. what ended up triggering whoever posted it was the fact that that same um, Wednesday night where Sammy and Jericho main evented on AEW and Sasha and Bailey um, main evented, they were going neck and neck, and Sasha Banks and Bailey segment had the more had the better rating so they were going back and forth off of that mm -hmm. and that trickled down to someone finding that clip of sammy saying what he said <laughs> so it's just always it's weird and funny how things always find a way of showing themselves right. i was like wait so how like, did this happen it. right so i was like if they never spoke about the ratings no one would have never known he said this right so but i mean sammy young but do you also feel like that's AEW's fault too for because they're so competitive with WWE that because at the same time I me like we were talking about it on our U a dub segment about about Sammy Guevara and how AEW took, you know, his pay and started giving it toward the women's shelter. So do you feel like they kind of either one helped push, you know, for the clip to come out because of their um their feelings towards wwe and two do mm -hmm. you feel like they're kind of like covering it up or like condoning it by giving the money to the women's shelter i think neither i think the first point is interesting because that'll mean you know because a lot of celebrities leak their own shit so i think that's a funny take on that i would have never thought of that um do i think they would have did that no i just feel like tony khan rather spend money on advertising then then leak his own shit. So I, I wouldn't put I wouldn't say they did that on purpose. Um do I think the I mean I think the the how he the situation was handled, I think it was the most professional way. I think it was in the more of I do think it was on a little like husher. It was just like, listen, we're gonna give you you gonna be suspended, you we're gonna give you money somewhere. You know, I mean, it's to a good cause, so I'm never going to downplay that. And I thought it was, I thought it was a good idea. Um, but I definitely think it was on some like, let's try to, let's try to get over. It, it was a PR move at its highest. Right. Yeah. So, and so, and that's a good other thing too. During these times of allegations, you could really see who got money because those that got money will definitely have a PR person side by side. When that whole Matt Riddle stuff popped off, and his lawyer posted. A memo? I said, oh. Yeah, the shit got real. Shit was real, <laughs> right? Like, I was like, oh. Shit was real, right. Because it wasn't yeah. even him. It wasn't even him. It was his lawyer. I was his like. lawyer. Yeah, he's. Said, but you know, that, that's thing. another thing in wrestling. Money, money talks. No, but my riddle too. Like, now I make him, I make him look like the, ever since I heard that, I was like tell, telling Mikey he looked like Tarzan. <laughs> Oh, why? I don't oh. know why because I think then I heard the allegations and then he said he jumped from somewhere. Uh, I was watching the match, the first match he had on SmackDown, and he jumped in the way he jumped. I saw Tarzan. Oh, uh, okay. And I was like, so, but that should happen with um, the allegations. And the next, what, few hours he gets on SmackDown and gets all this. Well, so I feel like even with the allegation, the only one that benefited was him. Because well, I, he was going to benefit regardless because... So here's the thing with WWE. You, it, it, it's, it's a proven fact. If they know about it before we all know about it, it's handled a lot differently backstage. Yep, yep. So, mm -hmm. so look at, for instance, Enzo. Enzo's the perfect ex example. Mm. Enzo had that whole allegation, a whole shit pop off. And the reason why he got fired is because WWE did not know about it first. Right. It wasn't that he was guilty. It wasn't that he was terrible. 
I mean, his attitude can kind of suck here and there, but it had nothing to do with not, none of that. It had everything to do with WWE not knowing that your employer not knowing that there's a there's something out there that's against you because in a way they feel like if they can't protect themselves, they can't protect you. Right. So if so, Matt Riddle, I th- and I think SmackDown was taped. So I think that was taped before all that stuff popped off. Yeah. Um, the only thing I think they pulled was the commercial on Fox. I think highlighting the match or something or the promotion on it. But yeah. they had already had Matt. I'm actually mad they did AJ first because I was really willing to pay for that live. But they had that plan for a while. So probably. So I think. I think them in the known about the girl and everything. Because in all honesty, this is just my honest. This is my opinion. You can hate it, take it or leave it. Mm-hmm. I think him. And, I think him and old girl was having an affair. I think the wife found out, and I think the wife told Matt, "Like, listen, clean this shit up." Right. And I think she did the typical. I think he did the typical thing, and he was like, "Yo, I can't mess with you no more." Like, she I got, got my wife, I got my kids, and she got mad, and she felt the way. And then here we go here because it's just in her story where she's talking about she in a van, you in a van full of other dudes. There's just no way me as a female and I've sat in a car with wrestlers. There's no way if I feel uncomfortable or violated that that car is still moving like at all. There's no way you can say everybody was sleeping in the car. The driver's not asleep. And he would have had to pull over and I would have got out. Like, so it's just, it was so many holes in her story. So, and I think WWE knowing the actual, like, knowing that that this, this person's been around him, I think they was able to protect him and protect themselves, so. Yeah. Man, yeah, that's just it's wild, though. A lot of it is wild. The double team dream, the one that got me. Listen, we can't talk about Patty Pat, because that's what I call him. And it just... I, Listen, innocent until proven guilty on that one. I right, can't, right. I just can't. Right. Like I, it just, it's just so much with that one to like really unpack, and it was just so, it was just wild. That's the one that got me the worst. Like I was just like, yo, he was like propelling himself so far, and it just seems like, it seems like every time he, his name is in in the papers for something good, it's like something bad happens behind it. Like it's just been like that for him. Like. Ah, poor Patty Pat. They, I hope we figure that out. Yeah, I don't know. for real, for real. Like, <laughs> like how that know. that you know. If you had to be the backbone, you know, and try to recover one of these um, careers from a PR crisis, who would you want to help out? Besides Patrick. Um, I don't know, like probably none of them because they all and listen, if you did some shit, it's already bad for us as we already like got two as women. We already got a few strikes against us. We females that like wrestling, that don't get respected, that don't get the same pay. Like there's so many things that, that are around that. And I think in order for real change, you, you gotta you gotta weed out those that are still stuck in nineteen seventies. Or those that don't respect women in wrestling. So I don't I think if someone really has it, like it's unfortunate, especially like especially with Joey Ryan. I think that hit me the hardest because I was like, damn, I've been wanting to go to bar wrestling for a minute. <laughs> so like I feel like with those instances, it's hard because you're not only losing the wrestler, you're losing the school, you're losing the promotion. Like there's a lot that some of these guys are really losing out on. But th- maybe they just need to lose out on it, like, and they need to rebuild on their own. And some some careers, you there's no comebacks. So this is one of these instances where if you you caught in this fire, that's that's it. Like, ain't nobody gonna w- really want to work with you. Nah, that's a whole fact. That's a whole fact. Now the last question that's been weighing heavily on my mind, right? Ooh, let's go, girl. And, and I must say, I am at fault for not right now being able to have seen all five parts only because I was working with kids in the, up until like Friday. Um, but is Taker really retired? Listen, 
I'm just gonna go on the record and say, take is on my top five, dead or alive. Five. Okay. Um, I actually, and it's just a funny way of things sometimes when an opportunity strikes, sometimes you gotta take it. I had dragged my, I think it was a year or a year and a half ago, take it to the signing at, in Long Island. At some like Comic Con, small Comic Con type of thing. It was $100. I was like, oh, that's a lot. I don't know if I wanna do that. It sold out. So I was like, fuck. All right. I missed my time with Taker. I gotta eat that. Then, opportunity struck, struck Survivor Series weekend in Chicago mm -hmm. to meet the Undertaker. So, I flew to Chicago, went for 24 hours. I went to meet the Undertaker because that was the most important thing to do. Because at that point, you were in a time where certain wrestlers, their time was coming, and you just gotta listen. If you ain't meet yeah, you the person you really want to meet, right? You gotta catch them. Yeah, like I regret not meeting like Vader or something because I'm like, man, I really wish I would have met him. So I was like, nah, take her. And my and I have a really close friend um, that I met actually at an independent show a few years ago. She lives in Chicago, so me and her, we went together, we marked out together, we took a picture with Mark. He gave us a hug. Like, we had a whole moment with the Undertaker. So I will always love that. Um, but then fast forward to, you know, then the way WrestleMania happened. And now with the documentary series, do I think it's the end? No. Because anyone that's been in the business over 30 years, you love the business, it's never the end. Look at Ric Flair. Ric is the best example that's um, what I said yesterday. That's <laughs> exactly the example I use. The cornerstone of I'm retired, but I'm not retired, and I never mm -hmm. will retire, and I will die in the ring because mm -hmm. that's the way I'm supposed to go out. Like Rick mm -hmm. is that monumental. This is what it is. So for Rick Flair, I mean, I don't think wrestling, I think him saying at the end, like after AJ, I don't have the I don't have the motivation to be in the ring again. I think he needs to it needs to be the perfect person. It needs to be the perfect time. And I think he'll he'll give us one more with people. I think he'll give one more. And you can also see the relationship he has with Vince. Vince knows that he is like a last resort option. Yeah. We'll not use him unless it's a must. This year, this past WrestleMania, which was here in New York, it was weird not seeing him at Mania. But then him being on the Raw, I was at the Raw. So I was like, well, I got the better end of the deal. Right. So I saw him. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's the end of The Undertaker. I think Taker is going to be, he's he's going to be loyal to Vince until the end of time. And that's so, so the contract they gave him, it wasn't like the legacy contract that they give the Hall of Famers. I think it was no, because I think once again, contracts are very difficult. So it's all about the wording. It's all about the legal terms. It's all about the do's, the don'ts. Like, I don't... Like, for instance, look at Edge. Edge's contract was, I think, with three years. It's four matches. Yeah. yeah. So I think with Takers, it just depends on what extremities are on that. Um, I love this segment, and I, I hate to spoil alert you on that. The segment of Taker talking to the guys at NXT was by far one of my favorite moments. Yeah. Because I think that also allows him to still be a part of the a part of wrestling, and it's the kind of like the post ring effect because you see a lot of the guys that you know you have like Road Dog, you have Triple H, you have um, all different type of guys that have been in the business over twenty five years now, trainers, now mentors, and things like that. So I think it, it definitely is a new chapter for Taker. The fan in me says, I'm not ready to let Taker go, so I'm just going to keep my hope alive. But I do think he'll give us one more. I think it has to be meaningful. And no, I'm not staying to fucking sting because I'm that fan. And I actually don't want to see that. I told you I don't want to see that shit too. You know, we're talking so about I, think they, I, think, I, think they need, I think they need to go ahead and just do it. Just no, so that people... If they, I could, if they were going to pull the trigger on that, they should have did it. When he was two, here. They should have did it two years ago. Right. No, I agree. I, I still just think they should just go ahead and just do it. Nah. They make it one of them little cinematic joints like with It'll AJ. Be, I think that would be good. I think that would be good. Who do you think they... Yeah. Or who would your dream match with Taker be? Right now? It could be from anyone in any, in the, any platform. Honestly speaking, the match with him and Bray needs to be redone. 
Yeah. And it needs to be done oh, correctly. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. But I've always, I've always thought that because I feel like at, Ray at one point was striving to be Undertaker. Mm hmm. He's and, gonna be like the next Undertaker. It's like passing the torch. Yo, I right. felt that. And and when he did that match where he called him out at Mania, you know, and he was like praying and praying, and like you saw the desperation in his eyes, like he played his part. I just feel like it just wasn't as boom as it should have been. It, it was. It wasn't boom because, I, as much as I'm a Taker fan, it wasn't boom because Taker won. That was it. Like it had nothing. To, like the build up was super dope, and it. Right. And it's, and Taker is definitely one of those. And you saw with even the John Cena build up to Mania and Nola. He doesn't need to be there for it to be a build up. Right. Like when, when he had the match with Triple H the first time, all it took was for the two of them to be in the ring at the same time and Triple H pointing. And that was it. That was the whole story. Didn't need nothing else. He didn't need no one to talk. So I think if Taker was to do one more, I do think he needs to correct the wrong with Bray. I think it'll be just like how with AJ, it's probably one of those, you know, bucket list things. Mm -hmm. I think Bray deserves that redo, but if not him, really because no Bray's matches else. have been good. Like, I'm like, I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me about the Firefly Funhouse. Nah, that match was dope. Which match? The little the Firefly, Firefly Funhouse joint. The little cinematic joint he just did. Oh, it's with That was dope. Like, a lot of people didn't like Genius. it, but I liked it with psycholo like a psychological thriller. Right. And honestly speaking, I liked it more because of John Cena's acting. Than right, 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 right. John so, Cena played his part. Like, and that's all. And that's all. Bray. Bray has almost complete creative control on what he does. So it's definitely a good vibe to kind of get the. You know, I feel like he's definitely rubbing off Foley now with the three faces. So, uh -huh. And I and I and I love it. And I, I was gonna say really I like dope. that. I like that. We need I more gimmicky really characters good. like that. Like, we do. I'm very curious to see what he's gonna do with this matchup bon with Braun Strowman at Extreme Rules. Oh, he's gonna come out the fire. He's the firefight. Like, like they're gonna bring back like the the original wife family type shit. I honestly think Bray is going to scout some fake ass Bray Wyatt look alike, like family look alike, and bring them out for the match. I really right. like. He's gonna find a fake. Ro um, Luke Harper, Eric Roman, and Braun Strowman. He's gonna come out with all three of them. It's it's gonna be dope. It's gonna be dope. But yeah, I would say Taker and Braun. The redo, I think, is if Taker was to do something. Um, but other than that, you mean Taker really, and Bray? Yeah, and Bray. I'm sorry. Um, other than that, there really is nobody like else necessarily. I mean, yeah, because he did. And they they did. I'm, I waited years for John Cena and Taker, and I felt like it was too late, too little, too late. But that was okay. Um, yeah, that's it. Like, I, there really is nobody else, to be honest. I mean, unless they go and give us Taker and, and Brock and have Taker beat Brock, so I can feel better about thirty. I was gonna, I was I was thinking that too. I said they would have to. <laughs> I don't think that nah, nah, they wouldn't do it because it would just take away from nah, and it's what they did. Would, yeah, it's what it's Brock did. Being the street, so I was I thinking did. that too. I said I would like to see that rematch. I, said, I would like to see that. They long, would, but you know, long live Taker is always going to be around. I ain't, I ain't right. About He's it not no going anywhere. <laughs> I ain't worried about no more. Trying to tell you that. So speaking of Flair, though, how do you feel about the Randy Orton Legend Killer Big Show Ric Flair debacle? They just need to fill something right now because they ain't probably got nothing else to do. Like, yeah. I, I feel like it was just a filler. Yeah. I mean, it's a dope filler because it was something. Honestly, I did not think of Big Show. Like, Big Show would have been bottom of the list for me. Like, wasn't even thinking about Big Show. Definitely wasn't even thinking about Ric Flair being on TV and low blown Christian. Like, I was like, what are we what era are we in but i'm here for it but right like are they i think they're trying to set the standards once again now that they have the quarantine still because lord knows we don't know when we're gonna be able to sit back in those seats right so, i think i think what i heard was they were building they trying to i think build randy up to look strong so he could go against drew um and then drew can then beat randy and hey, you can look strong, and then you yeah. know that'll be the hat. But what that he's gonna kill the legend killer? Yeah, because you know that's essentially what Taker did. So I mean, 
here we go again wrestling repeats itself wrestling's a cycle so i just feel like we're really like they they are using the quarantine to try to bring up the attitude era and part of me doesn't mind it but part of me feels like in the era that we're in in society a lot of things that were done during the attitude era probably would not be considered acceptable sure Oh yeah, like you couldn't have blonde panty matches. You couldn't have you couldn't have king, the king the king can say half the shit he says. Like if you ever go because I'm religious at watching old shit on the network. Yeah, if you just listen to what the king says on commentary. You're like, how did I? How was he able to say that? How would I able to listen to that? Like it's wild. Like they're doing a more PG version of the Attitude Era, which is fine. I mean, listen. I, I like I said at the beginning, I think Vince and, and also, you know, AEW, anyone that's been able to, to run through a pandemic that we're living through right now, so much kudos to you because th- that's not easy. So I take what I take what I can get. As a wrestling fan, I take what I can get. Oh no, that's a whole fact, right? I feel like as a wrestling fan though, I feel like now where they're talking about how the brand split is not working, you know. I feel like we're gonna get another alliance, another authority type storyline coming up soon. I don't know. I mean, I just, I mean, I like the brand split because I just like having things kind of ordered. Um, And also, too, them being in different brands, it added, like, honestly speaking, that's my one regret. Outside of when I went to Chicago for 24 hours because I went to meet Taker and I went to War Games because that's always been on my bucket list of things to do. So I I went to War Games. My only regret was not staying for Survivor Series because honestly speaking, the three brand Survivor Series was by far the best Survivor Series oh, hell right? yeah. the last five or ten years even. So sure. I think keeping specific brand people in specific brands. I think if there are times in the year where they you know do a pay-per-view all together that's cool like honestly speaking the whole rumbles of it being champa versus randy sign me up that that's that's money i'm okay with that but i thought champa doesn't want to really like let's say for example if he if randy had a world title on him right now and champa was to go against him didn't he not want to level up to, to the main roster uh, but he wouldn't have to necessarily because look at what Charlotte did. I mean, honestly speaking, her being NXT champion, it would have worked if we weren't in quarantine. In my opinion. I think quarantine sucked the life out of her having that title. Yeah. But other than that, I think, like, let's say if Randy had a title and Champa ended up like defending it on both brands for a little bit, I don't think that's too big of an issue right now. But I think if the world was open up, that's he wouldn't want to do that because that that would require you to travel a lot more than what you're doing now. My love, once again, thank you so much for sitting down, guys. L- trust me, listen. I think anyone that always asks me to talk because I will talk about wrestling to the end of time. But it's always refreshing to talk to two of other people outside of my realm of a podcast. Right. <laughs> yeah, like we're not on your level. But they, oh, I'm on no level whatsoever. However, the boys give me a run for my money all the time. Yeah. So I'm always glad to talk to other people <laughs> outside of yeah. Sir Wilkins and Mr. Black. I love them. Don't get me wrong, but Jesus, they give me oh, a run no, for my no, money. They're, so. though. they're super aggressive because I remember when Ray came on to the show and I felt so bad because <laughs> really, Yo, poor Ray. Boy. I felt so bad because we're obnoxious, and if you come to our, you know, our realm, and sometimes it can be a bit much. Yeah, I'm say. laughing though, right? Because I I follow the show, I watch them, so I know what to expect, right? And I told them, I'm like, you don't watch it as much as I do. So I'm telling you, they're gonna come out of their ass right now when it comes to certain topics. Beware. It will, yeah, and I mean, we could the conversation can go completely left. It could go right. It can go anywhere. So, well, but I mean, that's the kind of fun. I mean, I, I I think he had a good time. No, he had a great time. But poor guy, at one point, was just shook. Like <laughs> you can see it on his face. Like, what did I get myself into? And it was just really? like, oh boy, if I can only save you, but I can't save you because now you're in the war zone. So you gotta deal with it. Yeah. But, um, this no. one wanted to join you guys too at one point, but then Corona happened. Oh, you still can. 
Yeah, okay. we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it happen. We so still can I, listen. So it's a good time. Six, after six weeks of essential worker shit is done, we'll we'll, right. we'll put that into good. the into the mix. You're always welcome. Neither either one of you guys, anyone on your team is welcome to come and talk wrestling with us. Oh, you don't and want to there. We're worse. Look, do you not know who I do a show with? <laughs> Yo, Mikey, what if we did the Jabba Tears Raw Zone crossover? Three of them and the three of us. Like, well, I, okay, that. now that I would, uh, three, six people on the mic, I wouldn't be prepared for that, but you might get one or two from each side, so you might wonder. I mean, listen, because there's, there's three of us on our show and there's three of you. I mean, we can do three different episodes because I'm just telling you, six people. It's just gonna, whew, we could be, we could be sitting yeah. for three hours, okay? True. True. But, uh, but once again, thank you guys for having me. It was fun. I love it. I love what you guys are doing. Um, Where can they goes, um, every week we post our episodes, Jabba Tears Podcast. Um, you can follow us at Jabba Tears Podcast on Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook. We have a Facebook group. And then once again, we have two other shows. We have Cats and Dogs Podcast and your sports podcast. Show. Shout out to Lawrence and Tatiana. Yeah. So once again, um, you know, we have different things for different, you know, people's tastes and whether they don't like wrestling or not can have, you know, sports. We have, you know, love and relationships. So we're trying to build a brand here, you know, just trying to, you know. Do some cool shit, but um, but yeah, you can find us every week on all social media platforms for our new episodes. Um, and then hopefully soon we'll have a viewing party. We're you know looking to do um, if not extreme rules, depending on what phase that we decide to open up. Um, then Ooh. Summer Sam and a job is slim. Remember, because I remember that was supposed to actually happen. We were supposed to do a whole show, so you know we're actually gonna talk very soon about rescheduling it because it was supposed to be for actually this weekend. Um, 4th of July weekend um, But we're going to reschedule it, it will happen I will, Listen, if it's the last thing I do It will be to put on a show for New York So <laughs> so we will do it soon um, But we're working on some things too So stay tuned uh, We really want to give everybody An opportunity to eat at the table So we're making some moves to do that So, Alright okay. But thank you guys And let's do this again soon Okay. Yeah, absolutely Well. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Michael Bostic, drop your social media. Uh, you can find me everywhere at underscore Michael Bostic. And, you know, you could tell the world your name again, by the way. Uh, my name is Michael Bostic, a.k.a. Buster Hyman. Now we're going by Buster Hyman for the next four weeks. So, you know, you can tune in. We're going to be having a good time on Welcome to the Raw Zone. Uh... I don't know. I, I feel like I have something planned to do on the sneaky tip this month, but I haven't planned it out all the way yet. But y'all just stay tuned. Man. I might have something funny going on within the next few weeks. Oh, man. My name is Ivy. Ivy, your girlfriend's favorite player, your girlfriend's favorite photographer. You know, we're technically still recovering from yesterday's show with the hangover. But um, thank you everyone for tuning in to this. You can find me here at I am Ivy.exo underscore. Follow us everywhere at Rodman. Follow our sponsors at Talent Wave. Follow Cats Radio online. Follow CTF Radio. Follow EDC. Follow everyone. Like, follow the team. We're trying to give you all that good content. And we are done. We hope to see you soon, guys. Yeah.